Assalamu alaikum everybody. I have started the recording. So I have been uploading lectures on YouTube regarding this our second, um, I mean the section that we have started for the last few weeks, which is about multi-threading and synchronization between threads. So I hope you guys have been watching those lectures. And if you have any questions regarding those lectures, you can ask them here in these synchronous sessions. Do you guys have any questions regarding uh, threading? What are threads? How threads uh, execute in parallel? How we can share data between threads? What kind of problems arise when we share global data between threads and how we can solve those problems using locks and mutual exclusions? I'm saying this repeatedly because uh, tomorrow we have a makeup class in the morning and there will be a quiz. The quiz will be on threading, okay, multi-threading. And uh, secondly, your next assignment uh, that I'll release, I've already released the second assignment, which is due on the weekend. Uh, that is a theoretical assignment, so I think it should be easy for you guys because you have only to summarize some things, uh, read the chapter of the book and summarize some things. Right. Uh, wait a minute, so, um, this is second assignment, which should be easy for you guys. And the third assignment, which I'll release on the weekend, will be on multi-threading and synchronization between threads. Okay, so uh, that is why I'm asking repeatedly you guys to view those lectures on YouTube. And if you have any questions, ask them here in these synchronous sessions. Yes, somebody wanted to say something. Sir, कल हम हमारी सारे जैसे एक और क्लास है और उसमें क्वेज है कौन सी क्लास है सर हमारी एक और कोर्स है ऊप का उसकी क्लास है ऊप का हेलो यस सर ऊप आप लोग तो फिफ्थ सेमेस्टर में ऊप तो आप लोगों की खत्म नहीं होगी नहीं सर ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड एनालिसिस की कोर्स है हमारा इस सेमेस्टर अच्छा एनालिसिस एंड डिजाइन ओके सो दैट क्लास इट इज फ्रॉम दैट्स मिस्टर डॉक्टर राशिद जिलानी यस सर ओके आई विल आस्क हिम अबाउट दिस क्लास सो दिस क्लास इज ऑन 10:30 यू आर सेइंग यस सर अंटिल व्हाट टाइम Sir, we 11:30, 11:40. 11:40. Okay. okay. So, how about we make our class either before that or after that? Which one will suit you guys? Sir, we also have a class at nine as well. So, definitely after that. Okay. So at nine, which class is it? Signal systems. Okay. So nine. And then at 10:30 you have OOP, so let's make it at 12, 12 to 1:30. Yeah, okay. Is it good for everybody? 12 to 1:30. And we will also be having some makeup classes next week. Basically, I'll be releasing the YouTube lectures for this threading section uh, today or tomorrow, and the next section, which is on uh, file systems, how files are managed. We will do a couple of lectures on that. So I'll release it uh, th by this weekend, and I hope you guys will go on YouTube and um, view those lectures 
and if you have any questions you can ask them in interactive or synchronous sessions next week okay so next week we will have uh, our regular session as well as some extra um, synchronous sessions so that you guys can uh, have the opportunity to ask questions that you guys have uh, that you might have during the past few weeks about all the lectures that i have uploaded and you might not have seen them yet so the next week i think it's the last week right for your class is it the last week of studies yes uh, sir okay so we'll have like um, three to four interactive sessions so that they will serve as revision as well as opportunity to ask any questions that you might have uh, about the whole course in fact because uh, since it's the last week so we'll be wrapping up our topics and uh, you uh, you guys can ask about any topics that you have not understood during the whole semester in that week okay is it good this way some response would be nice is it good yes, if we have yes. a revision or synchronous sessions next week so that you can have um, i mean i'm sure when you will study you will have some questions so next week we'll dedicate to all the questions that you might have about any topics but for that i would request you and i would say that it is almost uh, necessary that you guys go on youtube and watch all the, those videos either watch the videos or read the relevant chapters in the book okay so any of uh, those two activities you guys do it and then when you come to the class come with questions come with questions and we can discuss any problems confusions that you guys might, uh, you guys might have okay so for tomorrow's session uh, we have decided that it will be from 12 to 1:30 yeah and we'll have a quiz it will be about, about 10 to 15 questions mcq questions and you will have uh, one minute per question okay and i've already uh, told you the syllabus the two chapters that you have to prepare for the quiz sir uh, time mein sir uh, quiz ke liye thoda sa practical ho jaye sir uh, matlab ke sir there is a a major issue of light and uh, internet outages all over no, no, pakistan no i understand i understand that's why it's an uh, mcq based quiz so if you have like light issues and um, internet issues then i would suggest you get a cell phone some kind of cell phone with a data package either borrow it from uh, your friends or family or you guys have if you have your own cell phone get some kind of that uh, setup so that you are not affected by uh, light outages or internet issues okay so cell <clears throat> phone package you will only need for like about uh, 10 to 15 minutes of data so <clears throat> you can access the quiz on your cell phone if you don't have internet and uh, since it's an it's an mcq based quiz so you won't be doing any coding or any other writing you will just have to click and choose the right option Okay, so that's why I'm especially going for MCQ based quiz quizzes, so that uh, in case anybody has uh, any issues, anybody is living in an area where there are lots of power outages or internet connectivity is a problem, then you guys can arrange a smartphone for like uh, 20 minutes with a data connection, and you will be able to uh, access the quiz on that device. and then mcq is like uh, easily done on smartphones okay any other comment or question so if you guys have any questions regarding the lecture videos that i have uploaded to the point questions you can ask now or if you don't ask any questions i'll move on to the next topic
Um, sir, I want to ask. Yes, please. Uh, sir, why don't we use like lock on buckets? On buckets, uh, you are yes. talking about the hash table. Yeah, yes. So buckets, if you realize, I mean, if you read those buckets are linked lists. Yes, sir. Right. So those linked lists, if you before the hash table, we have discussed the implementation of the linked list in that chapter. And if you see the implementation of the linked list, the linked list is implemented with a lock. So every yes. linked list has a lock, lock inside it. Right. Okay, so when we say uh, there are those buckets and every bucket is a linked list, then automatically if you uh, if we keep the implementation of the linked list that we have studied mm -hmm. before it, then automatically every bucket has a lock inside it right. because it's a linked list. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. At least one person saw those lectures. Any other question? Okay, so if you guys are not asking any more questions, then I'll move on to the next topic. And let me share my screen with you guys. So can you guys see the screen with uh, yes. condition variables written on it? Okay, good. So today we are going to talk, uh, discuss and study about another topic. It's called condition variables. Just like we have studied uh, about locks in multi-threading, when we share global data between threads, we have to synchronize the access to that global data so that only one thread accesses or modifies that global data at any given time. Okay. So this is called mutual exclusion and we implement it using locks. Okay. So locks are one construct which is used in uh, multi-threading programs for synchronization. S uh, condition variables are another construct which are used in multi-thread programs for synchronization, but that synchronization is of a different kind. Locks are used for mutual exclusion and condition variables are used in situations where one thread has to wait for a condition before going before moving forward okay one thread has wait for a condition to become true and only then it will move forward okay and until that condition is not true that thread will wait okay and by waiting we mean that it will go to sleep it will go to sleep and uh, as long as this condition is false and this condition will be made true by some other thread okay so some other thread when it makes that condition true it will wake this thread which is sleeping on this condition to inform this first thread that the condition that you are waiting for has become true and now you can wake and continue your execution forward okay so this kind of synchronization where one thread has to wait for a condition to become true by another thread for these kind of situations we use condition variables so we will see some practical scenarios where this kind of waiting is needed and how condition variables solve this problem of waiting for conditions. Okay, so this is uh, the scenario where condition variables are used, and we'll study it in detail in the next few slides. So locks we have discussed is uh, only for mutual exclusion, and if you want to wait for a condition, then locks are not an optimal way of waiting uh, for con conditions to become true. Okay? So for that, we need condition variables. So what kind of situations can we have where we need condition variables? Let's see this example. If you have seen the code involving creating threads, uh, running multiple threads in a program, then you must have seen that uh, we have a function called create thread, which basically creates a thread which run, then runs independently. Okay, so here uh, this is the main function. It calls this function pthread create, which will create the thread of this function child. Child is this function. Okay, so it will create the thread of this function child, and that child function uh, function will run in a separate thread independently 
after the creation of the second thread. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if you have seen these implementations earlier, then you uh, might have seen or you must have seen that in most of the cases, the main thread wants to wait for the termination of this child thread before moving forward. Okay. So we have a function called pthread join, which is provid provided by the pthread library, which lets the creator thread, the main thread, wait for the child threads to terminate. Okay. Now let's say if this function pthread underscore join is not available and you have to implement such a function yourself. So how will you implement it? How will you make this main thread wait until the termination of this child thread and only then it should move forward? Okay. So the idea is that the child thread will run after its creation on line number 10. The child thread will run independently and it will do its work okay, and it will ultimately terminate. We want the main thread to wait for the termination of a child thread before moving to line number 12. Okay. So this line number 12 should be executed after the child thread is terminated. Okay. So how do we implement this kind of synchronization between two threads where one thread has to wait for a condition to become true. Here the condition is the termination of the child thread, the finishing of the child thread. Okay. So how can we make the main thread wait for the termination of child thread before moving forward and executing line number 12? We want to uh, print this line number 12 after the child is finished, which means after the child has printed its line. Okay. After the child has done its work, we want to uh, make the main, main thread wait until then. Only after that we want it to move forward and uh, print this line number 12. Okay, so we want to implement here on line number 11 some kind of mechanism for the main thread to wait for the termination of his child. So normally we do it uh, do it with calling of p thread underscore join. Okay, but let's say p thread underscore join is not available, and you have to implement the functionality of the p thread join yourself. So how can we implement such a functionality? Is it clear the problem, the situation that I'm describing, what do we have to do? Yes, sir. Okay, so can you guys suggest some solution? Any kind of solution is valid uh, right now. We'll come to the de details later. But what can we do to make the main thread wait until the child is finished? Okay, the wait system call basically waits for the creation uh, for the termination of a child process. Okay, child process is basically like completely another program. Here we are uh, talking about only one program and it has multiple threads. Okay, so we are not going, uh, we are not trying to wait for the termination of another program, rather, we are going to wait for the termination of a, a thread within the same program. Okay. You can use a flag. Uh, good. So how will you use a flag? Um, we can uh, set some value and uh, after we, uh, the child has been executed, we can reset its value so that now the, the process can, like the thread can do the same execution. Very good. Very good. That's exactly the first solution that is proposed in the book also. So first and very simple solution can be that we set a global variable, let's say a flag, and we uh, initialize it to zero. Okay. So the main thread, it will check on the flag, and as long as the flag is zero, the main thread will wait. It will uh, go in a while loop and wait as long as the flag is zero. It will keep waiting until the child is executed and child once it is executed just before calling return null null child will basically make that flag equal to one okay. so child will using uh, changing the value of the flag child will signal 
the parent that now I am done. Now you can move forward. OK, so once the child has set that flag equal to one child will terminate and the main thread which was spinning in a while loop waiting for the flag to become non zero. It will eventually see that now the value of flag has become uh, one. So it will know that the child is terminated and then the loop will end and it will basically move forward and execute the line number 12. OK, so that's a very good solution and here it is. So here it's a global variable called done and global variable as we know is uh, shared between multiple threads. So this is child thread. It will run separately and after it has done its work, it will make done equal to one. And the main thread after creating this child thread, main thread will execute separately and child thread will execute separately in another thread. Okay. So the main thread it here goes in a loop which the condition is while done equal equal zero done is zero from the start. Mm -hmm. So as long as done is zero, this loop will run and it will basically spin. It will wait doing nothing. OK, so it will wait, 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 wait and the child thread will run independently. Ultimately, the child thread will finish. It will make done equal to one and uh, finish. It will end. OK, so the main thread, it will eventually see that the value of done has become one and it will break this loop and it will <clears throat> uh, execute line number 15 which will print parent. OK, so this implementation has satisfied our requirement that line number is 15 is printed only after the child thread has terminated. OK, so in that sense, this is a correct solution. OK, so is it clear to all the others? how this solution is solving our problem. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, but you propose the solution. I'm asking the others. OK, no response. So we'll assume that everything is good with everybody and move forward. So this is a solution. It's correct, but it has a slight issue that the problem is that main thread, as long as the child thread is not finished, main thread will continue to spin. Spinning means it will run on the processor. It will consume CPU cycles and uh, basically it will uh, complete all its time quantums occupying the CPU or every time it is scheduled but it is basically doing nothing it is waiting okay it is doing nothing but still it is using cpu cycles or cpu resources so the solution is correct but it is not very very efficient in terms of performance okay so if you have lots of threads waiting for this kind of thread uh, conditions then all those threads will be spinning all the time and they will be using many many cpu resources okay so this solution results in a kind of wastage of CPU resources. Although it is correct, it is satisfying our correctness requirement, but the slight problem is that it is not very, very efficient. What would have been better solution is that if this thread sees, main thread sees that done is equal to zero, instead of spinning, we would like it to go to sleep. Okay, we'll like it to go to sleep so that it is not scheduled and it does not waste CPU cycles. Okay? And we would like the child thread that once the child thread has finished all its work, it should wake this main thread. OK, so that the main thread now can uh, continue with execution forward. OK, so uh, the solution is correct, but it's slightly inefficient in the form of uh, performance. So we would like it to improve on this solution and would like to make the main thread sleep and we would like child thread to wake the main thread when it is finished and only then main thread can move forward. So we see, we will see in the next slide how we can improve this solution to implement uh, this efficient solution using condition variables. So spinning is wasteful and we have operating system provides us with special constructs called condition variables to basically solve exactly 
the type of problem that we discussed on the last slide. So just like clocks, condition variables are operating system provided structures okay? and they are an abstraction which has basically two kind of operations defined on them. Okay? So a thread or a program can call wait on a condition variable and when you call fate on a condition variable, the condition variable will basically put the calling thread to sleep and it will put it on a queue. Okay, so every condition variable has a queue associated with it. Every thread that calls wait on a condition variable is put on a queue, is put to sleep and put on a queue. Now other threads, they are running and other threads might call signal on the condition variable. So the second operation defined on the condition variable is called signal. Okay. So what does the signal operation do? When a thread calls a signal operation on a condition variable, the operating system will see, is there any thread waiting in the queue of this uh, condition variable? So if there are threads waiting on the con uh, condition variable, then the operating system will inform one or more of those threads that are waiting. Okay. Inform means the operating system will wake them up, wake one or more threads that are waiting on those condition variables and uh, enable them to, to run. Okay, so in our example, uh, okay, so before we come to our example, we'll just uh, read these lines and uh, it's basically saying the same thing that a condition variable has a queue associated with it. And whenever a thread calls a wait on a condition variable, the operating system will put that thread on the waiting queue and put it to sleep. Okay. And if another thread sometime later calls signal on the same condition variable, then the operating system will basically look in that queue of that condition variable. Are there any threads waiting? If there are threads waiting on that condition variable, then the operating system will take one or more uh, threads that are queued on that condition variable, wake them up and uh, start them running. Okay. So in our example, if we use a condition variable, we will see that uh, it can solve the problem of uh, waiting and it does it without spinning. Okay. So how is the condition variable used? Basically, the Again, there can be many implementations of condition variable. Condition variable is an abstraction, okay? It's an abstraction, any implementation which defines these two implement uh, behaviors of weight and signal can be used as a condition variable. Okay. There are different implementation of condition variables available on different operating systems. Okay. Unix have multiple implementations. Windows has its own implementation of condition variables. So one <coughs> implementation of condition variables is provided by this pthread library. Okay. So the pthread library has a special data type uh, whose my name, the type is pthread underscore cund cond underscore t. Okay, so this conditional cund, there are underscore before and after it. Okay, so pthread underscore cond underscore t, this data type, which is the type of a condition variable, and you can declare variables of data that data type. So here we are declaring a variable c of data type p thread underscore cond underscore t and that this variable will now behave like a condition variable. Okay. So once you have declared this variable, then in your different threads, you can call wait or signal on this condition variable. Okay. So p thread library provides you with these two uh, functions which you can call on condition variables. One is p thread underscore cond underscore wait. In this, you will pass the address of the condition variable on which you are calling wait. Okay. So the address of this variable and a mutex. Okay, mutex is a lock as we have studied in our earlier chapters. So we'll see why this mutex is needed for this condition variable. So this is the uh, syntax of the function wait or p third underscore count underscore wait on uh, to be called on condition variables. Its counterpart function is called pthread underscore cond underscore signal, which is used to signal a condition variable 
and uh, your threads can call this function p thread count underscore signal by passing it the address of a condition variable. Okay, so these two addresses should be addresses of a variable of type p thread underscore count underscore t. Okay, so this is uh, interface of condition variables in the p thread API. Okay? And as you can see, they are quite simple syntaxes, uh, easy to call in your threads. So let's see how we can define uh, that join function that we want to implement in our threads. So <clears throat> we define here the p thread underscore exit function. Uh, sorry, thread thr underscore exit, which when a thread exits, it will call this thread exit function and it will basically signal the condition variable. Okay. And here we define a thread join function, which the main thread will call because it wants to wait for the child thread to finish. Okay. So here we are implementing the thread exit and join function, but in the book, the author is starting with some wrong implementation just to see what can happen if we have the wrong implementation of these um, threads or these um, these function in threads. So let's see the thread fun uh, exit function. The child thread, once it has finished its execution, it will basically call this thread exit function. Okay. And the thread exit function, it will signal this condition variable. Okay. We'll define a global condition variable which will share, which will be shared between the child thread and the uh, main thread. And the main thread will basically call this thread underscore join in which it will call condition underscore wait function. Okay. And uh, as we have discussed, when a thread calls this wait function on a condition variable, it will put it will be put to sleep and put on a queue inside this condition variable. So the main thread when it's called join, it will be put on a queue on this condition variable and put to sleep. The child thread, when it finishes, it will call this thread exit function and thread exit function, it will call this condition uh, signal function on the same condition variable. So the signal function, we know the behavior of signal function is that uh, the operating system will go and see if there are threads waiting for on the queue of this condition variable. Okay, so if the main thread has called the join function, then the main thread would be sleep and wait put on the waiting queue of this condition variable. So the operating system, if, the, if it finds the main thread on the waiting queue of this condition variable, the operating system will wake the main thread and return this signal function. Okay, so the main thread basically, uh, child thread will finish and the main thread now that it is awake, it will continue its execution forward. So that's it. if this is the implementation of um, third exit and third join, can there be any problem in the implementation if we call if we let's say we have a condition variable which exhibits the behavior of weight and signal as we have discussed okay? and we share and we declare a global condition variable and we share it between the main thread and the child thread okay? and in the main thread we call this thread underscore join where we have to wait and in the child thread we call this thread underscore exit where we have to like that after child thread has finished its execution just before returning at the end the child thread calls this thread exit so if we implement this synchronization like this can there be any problem in our program
what will happen if the main thread creates a child thread and then the main thread calls join okay and the child thread after its creation it starts running and at the end of the child uh, thread it calls thread exit function and the condition variable behaves as we have discussed Okay, let me walk you through it step by step. The main thread runs. Okay, it creates a child thread, and then it calls thread underscore join. What will happen to the main thread? It will wait. It will go to sleep. Uh, it will yes. call this condition wait, and it will go to sleep <laughs> on this condition variable. Okay, very good. Yeah. So it has went to sleep, and the child thread was created. It is scheduled. And it starts running. It starts running, and it uh, finishes its task. And just at the end, just before return, it calls thread exit. What will happen if this code is executed? Um. Yeah. Go ahead. It will work properly, but we, we will not be sure which uh, thread would exit because uh, in the queue we're not sure. Let's say for the moment there is uh, this condition variable is shared between only the child thread and the main thread, okay? Mm -hmm. And only the main thread is called thread and score join yet. So on the queue of this condition variable, there will be only one thread, the main thread. Oh, uh, okay. So in that case, what will happen if the child thread calls this thread and score exit function? It will. Um, Run properly, I guess. Yes. Uh, uh, the, so uh, the, it'll explain the run properly for the benefit of your friends. After the con condition signal, it will come back and start executing the main fun. Uh, I mean, the main function will start executing. Yeah. So uh, it's better to say that this function, uh, signal function, will wake the main thread. Yes. Okay. So yeah. it will wake the main thread and it will return. So it will basically exit the child thread will it, it this function will finish and the child thread will exit and the main thread which was sleeping now that it is awake it will be scheduled and it will run or it will continue its execution forward okay so everything went well didn't it yes very good now let's imagine a slightly different scenario in the main thread when the main thread creates a child thread both of that those threads are now existing within the operating system okay and the operating system scheduling is not in our control so the scheduler can either run the main thread first or it can run the child thread first okay in this scenario that we just discussed we discussed the first situation in which the scheduler runs the main thread first okay and the main thread runs uh, or calls p thread and score join before the child thread is run okay let's consider the other scenario in which after the main thread has created the child thread, the scheduler chooses to run the child thread first. Okay, so let's uh, run this scenario again. In this second situation, the child thread starts running and it calls, uh, after finishing its work, it calls thread exit. What will happen? What will be the behavior of this function? Um. There is no process in sleep, so um, it wouldn't wake any process. I think. Very good. It wouldn't wake any process. A signal will be called. It will go and look in the None queue of this uh, queue of this uh, condition variable. There is no process waiting in the uh, sorry, no thread waiting in the queue of this condition variable. So it will not wake any uh, thread, and it will just return. And this function will return, and child thread will exit. Okay. Now child thread is finished, and main thread is run. The main thread is run and main thread will basically call this thread and score join. Okay. So what will happen when the main thread calls this, uh, this thread and score join? 
it will uh, put this thread into sleep and wait for child good it will uh, this p thread underscore con underscore wait will be called and yes. this thread will be put to sleep the main thread will be put to sleep to wait for the child mm -hmm. but now there is no more child so there is no more child it so there will is no be put sleep to forever very good there is no child process to wake this main thread and therefore this main thread will uh, sleep forever okay so now this is a problem in this implementation that it is since scheduling is not in our in our control it is possible that child thread runs and finishes before the main thread has the chance to call this thread join so we have to guard against such kind of situations in our implementations okay so this was one implementation and here this one is another implementation okay in this to avoid this situation where the child has already finished and the main thread is running after the child has finished uh, calling this thread underscore join we have put this done uh, variable we have shared this done variable globally between the two threads and initially done variable is zero and the main thread when it calls thread underscore join it will go to sleep only and only if done is still zero okay because done is still zero means the child has not finished yet okay the child thread when it is like um, finished it will uh, before exiting it will call thread underscore exit and it will make the done equal to one and signal this condition variable also okay so now run both the scenarios using this second implementation in your mind both scenarios in which main thread runs first and calls p thread underscore join and child thread run later and uh, calls thread underscore exit and similarly the second scenario where child thread runs first and calls thread underscore exit and main thread runs later and calls thread underscore join later you can go ahead and uh, speak loudly and run both scenarios one by one i'm sure they'll work fine i guess with this uh, but uh, just speak them step by step so that your friends can also get some insight sir if the main thread runs uh, first uh, it'll call thread join join um, then it will done it will probably be zero because th there is no child which has done uh, which had change its value so it will call wait after yes. the wait uh, the thread exit will be called and no no after, what will happen when it uh, it will go to sleep it very good it will go to sleep sir. so since in our scenario we are by definition we have said that uh, child thread has not yet run so mm -hmm. main has called join before child thread has run so done will be zero okay so yeah. it, main thread will go in the if condition and it will call wait and it will go to sleep okay yeah. so after that if child thread runs later then uh, the value of done will be changed and it'll signal which will wake the uh, thread and the, then it'll yeah. exit yeah so child thread will run later and after finishing its task it will uh, call thread exit and it will call uh, make done one and signal this condition variable so the operating system will see any thread sleeping on on the queue of this condition variable it will find the main thread so it will wake the main thread and yeah. uh, child thread will finish main thread is now awake so it will return from the join function and move forward okay yes. so this was the first scenario which was okay in this situ implementation and is also okay in this situation yeah. now we run the second scenario where this implementation was bad and so what happens yeah. in this implementation um uh, when the child is created it will run th uh, thread exit the value of done will be 1 uh, and then it is l condition since this and then exit then they they'll be uh, then the main one i mean 
the parent function will be coined the thread join and there will be no uh, the this condition will be false if done this, is equal to zero uh, so yes. it, it wouldn't like uh, go through it and mm. it'll just run i think very good join After function that, will return and main will continue forward yes. because the condition has already been fulfilled so main has no reason to wait so yes. it will continue forward okay so i'll repeat what you have said for the benefit of your friends that in the second scenario the child thread runs first it completes its task and makes done equal to one and calls p thread count underscore signal on this condition variable the operating system will go and see is there any thread waiting on the queue of this condition variable there will be none because main thread has not called join yet so it will do nothing and this function will return and child thread will exit in the second i mean the second thread main thread will be scheduled by the operating system and it will call thread join okay so before calling p thread uh, wait it checks if done equal to zero now that child thread has finished uh, it has made done equal to one okay, before exiting so the main thread will now see that child thread done is equal to one so it will know that child thread has finished and there is no need to call sleep now because the condition has already been fulfilled so this if condition will become false and main thread will skip this line number eight and will return from nine, uh, line number nine and continue its execution forward which is the correct behavior because the condition has already been fulfilled for which it was going to wait okay. so this implementation appears to be correct in both situation okay. there are still situation situations which can arrive in which this uh, implementation will also fail okay. that's why we use locks in the implementation of condition variables so what is the scenario under which this implementation can fail the key point here is that scheduling is not in our control the scheduler can deschedule any thread at any given moment and schedule another thread at any given moment in this implementation can you guys guess a scenario where in this implementation the scheduler can mess things up for us by descheduling a thread at any given moment at any line Sir, context wise, but we are using locks for it. So, yeah, but in this implementation, we are not using locks. Uh, all right. So, what can go wrong? Because of the context switch, as you said. Mm. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Give me a second. I'm trying to think. Sure.
I'll tell you. Uh, run the scenario in your mind or uh, loudly step by step for the information of your friends. When the main thread is run first, the main thread calls thread join, mm-hmm. and there's a context switch after line number seven. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, the next thread will call thread join. No, the main thread is run first, uh, and the uh, main th- main thread calls thread underscore join. Okay. Line number six is executed. Line number seven is executed, but mm-hmm. before line number eight, there's a context switch. Okay. And then child thread is run. What will happen? Child thread. I'll change the value to one. One. And then a signal. Uh, signal since there is, will, no there is no thread waiting, so child thread will exit. Exit. Operation so will do nothing. Okay. Yes. So this <coughs> thread is finished, and yes. then. <coughs> There's context switch again, and main thread is run again. Okay. So main thread will execute its uh, <coughs> execution, continue its execution from line number eight because line number seven has already been executed. Okay. okay. So the main thread has last connect. time it checked the value of done, it was zero. So it entered this if condition. Okay. Mm-hmm. But before it get got a chance to execute line number eight, there was a context switch. Child thread. Executed, made done equal to one, signaled and finished. Okay. Now the main thread is scheduled again. Main thread will execute line number eight, but the problem is done is, is not one. is one. Okay, the operating system. Oh, sorry, the main thread is <clears throat> relying on the old value of done. The value of done has been changed during the context switch, but the main thread is not aware of it. Okay, so the main thread will call uh, p thread condition underscore wait. It will go to sleep, and since the child thread has already finished, there is no thread to wake it up, so it will sleep for ever okay. again. Okay, so this implementation is also flawed in the sense that once the main thread has seen the value of done, child should not be allowed to change the value of done before. Main has called wait. Yes, sir. Okay, is it clear to you? And the others also. Yes, sir. I hope they guys are following along. So we should be multi-threading in pro- uh, programming. You should always keep in mind that the scheduler is your enemy. Okay, the scheduler can make always make things worse for you. So you have to, in your implementation, you have to guard against the scheduler, okay? Because the scheduler is not in our control, it can do anything, anytime. So our implementation have to be robust against the schedulers. So let's see another implementation. Here we are using a mutex with the condition variable, okay? as well as a variable done. Okay? In if you see in the last example. Here we are using mutex lock, but we are not using done variable. Here we are using a done variable, but not the mutex. Okay. Therefore, these two implementations are flawed. Here we have another implementation which uses a done variable as well as a mutex with the condition variable. So here is the implementation of p thread exit. Before we Modify the value of done or call signal or uh, signal basically modify the value of the condition variable. So before we modify any of these global variables that are shared between the threads, we have to acquire the lock or mutex. Okay, because this is shared data being modified between thread, so this is the critical section of our uh, programs. So to enter the critical section, a thread must first acquire a mutex associated with these. Uh, global data. Okay. Here the mutex is m. So whenever a uh, thread wants to modify the global data, it will acquire the lock or mutex. It will change the global data. Child thread will basically in thread exit make done equal to one and signal this condition variable. And after doing this, it will release the lock or the mutex. Okay. This is the 
implementation of thread underscore exit. And the child thread after finishing its uh, work, whatever it was supposed to do before exiting, it will call thread underscore exit, okay, which will do all this stuff. Make done equal to one signal recognition variable. This is from the side of the child thread and on the side of the main thread, we have this thread underscore join. Again, since it is going to modify access and modify the global variables, it is accessing done and modifying this uh, condition variable C. It will basically acquire this mutex before accessing this global variable. And then once it has acquired the mutex, it will access the global variable, modify it and release the uh, mutex. Okay. In its uh, implementation main thread, after creating child thread, wherever it want to, it wants to wait for a child thread, it will call thread underscore join. So here this is thread underscore join. Okay. So one thing which is critical in this implementation is that p thread underscore condition underscore wait, it is being passed the address of the condition variable as well as the address of the mutex. Okay. That is because when this thread is sleeping, the main thread, if it goes to sleep, we don't want to, we don't want the main thread to keep the mutex all the time it is sleeping. Okay. What will happen if the main thread calls join, it acquires the mutex and it goes to sleep? What will happen? It goes to sleep while holding the mutex. Um, no other um, thread can, uh, every other thread will be blocked. Uh, blocked from what? Blocked from uh, accessing the, this thread join function. Accessing the thread join I mean, function. Uh, I mean, uh, it'll uh, it'll be blocked. The p thread and the mutex lock will block it, since it is an its value is not. So, let me rephrase it, and you tell me if we wanted to say the same thing. Mm -hmm. That if this thread main thread has acquired this lock and yes. it goes to sleep while holding this lock, then mm -hmm. no other thread will be able to acquire the lock. Yes. No other thread will be able to acquire the lock, which means if this thread goes to sleep and child thread runs and child threads want to call thread exit and it wants to modify this done equal to one and signal the condition variable, will it be able to execute line number seven and eight? Um, no. No, because it is before executing seven and eight, it is calling p, th uh, p thread underscore mutex underscore lock to acquire the lock. Mm -hmm. And since the lock has uh, by definition, lock can be only acquired by only one process. And since main thread has slept while holding the lock, then no other process can acquire the lock as long as main thread is holding that lock. Okay. So child thread will not be able to acquire the lock and it will, it will not be able to make done equal to one and signal the condition variable. So main thread will again sleep forever. That is why in the implementation of the condition variable uh, p thread underscore condition underscore weight, we pass the address of the mutex along with condition variable so that internally the operating system, when it puts the uh, main thread to sleep, it releases this lock internally. Okay? Internally, it releases the lock so that another thread is able to acquire the lock and signal this thread. So when the other thread acquires a lock and signals this thread, then the operating system, when it wakes this condition variable, uh, sorry, when this wakes this thread, waiting for the condition variable, before returning from wait, it will reacquire the lock and give it to the main thread. Okay. So before entering this condition underscore wait, main thread is holding a lock. After returning from this condition underscore weight, main thread is still holding a lock, but inside condition underscore weight, during the time this main thread is sleeping, the operating system will release the lock. 
is it understand understandable what i just said yeah main thread it looks like uh, main thread is holding the lock all this time okay but the implementation of condition underscore wait is such that internally the operating system will release the lock when it puts the main thread to sleep okay? and before returning from this condition underscore wait when this thread is wake uh, woken by another thread it will reacquire the lock and give it to the main thread okay? only then this condition underscore will return and main thread will formally release the lock okay? so if this is the implementation that we have right now let us run both those scenarios the scenarios in which uh, main thread runs first child later and child thread runs first and main later or any scenario in between the two where a context switch can happen any given moment will is this implementation correct by correct uh, we mean that no thread should go to sleep forever and main, main thread should we wait for the child thread to finish before printing line number 30 so let's run them one by one uh, first of all let main thread run first and it call thread join so it will basically acquire the lock check that done equal to 0 and it will go to sleep and internally the lock will be released main thread has slept child thread will be scheduled it will run it will do its task it will run thread and score exit which will basically acquire lock require the lock because the lock has been internally released it will be able to acquire the lock it will be able, able to make done equal to 1 and signal the condition variable and release the lock okay so it will call thread exit and it will uh, basically return when it called p thread and score signal this thread which was sleeping was woken and the operating system gave the lock back to this thread and uh, it will release the lock return from this thread and since done is also equal to one so it will basically uh, exit this loop release the lock and p thread join will return and main will print this line number 30 okay so everything went as we wanted it to now let's run another scenario in which after p thread create child thread is run first child thread is run first and child thread basically runs does its tasks and before exiting call thread underscore exit so the thread exit it will acquire the lock it will be succeed in acquiring the lock because no thread is holding the lock it will make done equal to one condition variable it will signal no thread is waiting on the condition variable so it will basically uh, do nothing release the lock and return child thread will finish child thread finishes main thread is scheduled again it will call thread underscore join thread underscore join it will acquire the lock it will see while done equal to zero now done is not equal to zero because done has been made one by the child so it will basically skip this line release the lock and print line number 30 okay so this again everything went according to plan let's see the third scenario where main thread runs it will basically uh, create the child thread call thread join inside thread join it acquires the lock it checks done equal to zero done is not equal to zero so it will go inside the uh, while loop okay? but before it it is able to call a condition score wait there's a context switch after line number 20 there's a context switch main thread is descheduled and child thread is scheduled so child thread is run it does its task it called thread underscore exit what will happen now it will be blocked I mean... it will be blocked very good because uh, we are holding the lock and since condition underscore it has not been called yet main thread is still holding the lock the lock has not been released so child thread will not be able to modify the value of done without the main frame uh, main thread knowing okay, last time what happened was main thread had read the old value of the uh, done and during the context switch child had 
change the value of done without the main thread knowing about it. Okay? So this time, since the main is holding the lock, child will not be able to access done and modify it during the uh, contact switch. Okay? So child thread will block. Since it's blocked, ultimately it will be descheduled. Main thread will be scheduled again. It is already inside the uh, while loop. It will call wait on the condition variable and it will go to sleep and lock will be released internally. Okay? So main thread will go to sleep and ultimately the child thread will get the lock because when lock is released, other threads waiting for the lock will get the lock. So child thread will get the lock, it will be scheduled, it will make done equal to one condition signal and release the lock. But so when the child thread condition signal, this main thread, it will be waken, open and given the lock. So main thread condition is called wait will return, unlock uh, the mutex and join and return and it will continue forward. Okay, so this implementation takes care of the deficiencies of the previous two implementations and in all the scenarios, it will work correctly. Okay, is it good? Yes, sir. Okay, so I hope it's clear to the others also. And here is the classic method how we can use condition variables for uh, letting threads wait for a condition. And once that condition has become true, then the threads can uh, end their wait and resume their execution and move forward. So condition thread, uh, this uh, condition variables, they are used in different scenarios. One of the most classic scenarios in uh, computer science where we use condition variables between multiple threads it's a, is this producer consumer problem okay it's a theoretical version of the problem which you will encounter almost everywhere in computer science so it is a synchronization problem okay where threads have to synchronize uh, their ex they have to synchronize their execution while accessing global data and wait for some conditions to true uh, to become true before they can move forward and do some things. So the classical version of this problem is like this. You have one or more producer threads that are producing some values. And on, on the other side, you have one or more consumer threads that consume the values that are being produced by the producers. And the transfer of the values from the producer to the consumer happen through a shared buffer. So buffer is like just like an array. It can be one integer or an array of integers or other uh, type, which is a global variable and it is shared between all the threads, producer as well as consumers. So what the producers will do, they will write values inside the buffer and the consumers, they will consume those values, which means they will read those values from the buffer. So one thing is that this buffer is bounded which means the buffer has a limited size. Okay, it can be either one, uh, hold one integers, 10 integers, 100 integers, it doesn't matter. The thing to, uh, that matters is that buffer is of finite size. So other conditions, I mean, that are implied in this uh, problem are that the consumer threads, they should read all the values produced by the producer threads. And the condition thread should read only the values being produced by producer threads. No other values they should read. Let me give an example. Let's say we have one producer thread and one con uh, consumer thread. Okay. If the producer threads uh, produce the values one, two, three, four, then the consumer thread should read the value one values one two three four in the same order. It should not read values one two three or one three four okay, or one three six. Okay, it should not uh, read any other values. It should read exactly the same values that have been produced by the producer thread 
and in the same order. Okay, it can't read three to uh, three to four one. If the producer had produced one two three four, then it should read one two three four. Okay, so this is a classic problem in computer science. So what will happen is if we run these uh, two threads together. So the producer thread is supposed to write in the buffer. The consumer thread is supposed to read from the buffer. Since scheduling is not in our control, so any thread can run first. Okay. So the typical scenarios where error can happen and uh, we have to guard against those scenarios in our implementation are some of the following. Let's say the consumer thread is run first. Okay, it goes and read values from the buffer. Well, the producer thread has not yet run, so the producer thread has not produced any values. So any values that the consumer thread reads from empty buffer are garbage values. Okay, so the producer thread, sorry, the consumer thread has to wait for the producer thread to produce some values before it can go ahead and read uh, from the buffer. Okay, so here uh, you see that there is a condition where one thread has to wait for some condition to become true before it can go ahead and read values from the buffer. This is one error that can happen in this problem. The second error that can happen is let's say producer thread is run first and it has to produce let's say 100 values the size of the buffer is 4 we have uh, buffer is bounded so let's say the size of the buffer is 4 so the producer thread goes ahead and write one value in buffer it goes ahead write second value in buffer third value fourth value in buffer and now the buffer is full the producer thread if it writes another value in buffer, it will be overwriting any of the already produced values. Okay? And if it overwrites any of the already produced values, before those values have been read by the consumer, then that value is lost forever and the consumer will never be able to read it. Okay? So again, the producer thread has to guard against this condition and it has to see if the buffer is full then it should not write other values and it should wait for the consumer thread to run, read some values so that there is some space in the buffer and it can go ahead and only then after it can uh, produce the new values in those empty spaces. Okay, So again, there's a condition where one thread, the producer thread has to wait for some condition to become true for the consumer thread to consume some values before it can go ahead and produce more values. Okay, so this is the synchronization that is being talked here that we have to synchronize between the producer and consumer threads for this problem to be solved correctly. Is it clear what is the producer consumer problem? Yes, sir. To other people. I keep saying this repeatedly that most people are not responding, but I can't force you guys. So let's see how we can solve this problem. Um, so here, yes. We have a class at 12. Okay, what time is it? 46 okay okay so what i will do is i will record the remaining of this uh, lecture in video and i will upload it on youtube okay so you guys are requested to go ahead and uh, then watch this lecture on the remaining of this lecture on youtube and then if you have any questions you can ask me in tomorrow's class or later so so uh, no. 10.30, you guys are saying that you have another class. So our class now has moved to 12 to 1.30. Okay, so I'll send you guys a mail and there will be a quiz at the start of that class. Okay. So 12 to 1.30.
okay so i'll stop this lecture here i'll stop the recording and i'll send you guys a mail regarding this new timing okay. so